Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So in this video we'll be looking at a couple of examples of algebraic locus problems. Okay, so let's have a look at the examples. So the example says, illustrate the following loci on separate argand diagrams. Okay, part one. Pi on 6 is less than or equal to arg z, which is less than or equal to pi, and the imaginary part of z is less than 3. Part 2, z times z bar is less than 4. And part 3, the modulus of z squared minus z squared bar, so this is here the conjugate of z squared, so the modulus of this is le uh, greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so let's have a look at these one at a time. Okay, so the first one that we're looking at is pi on 6 is less than or equal to arg z, which is less than or equal to pi, and the imaginary part of z is less than 3. Okay, so with this type of question, we have two different locus types in the one locus problem. So since this here says and, what we have to do, we have to work out these two regions and sketch where they overlap. So and is another way of saying intersection. So in set notation, we call this the intersection of two sets. So the intersection is where they have common points. Now if this said or, it would be what's known as a union of sets, which would be the entire the entirety of one set and the entire of the other set, the entire set of points. But because this says and, we're just looking at an intersection here. So let's have a look. The first one, well, this is just a geometric type problem, and we can solve that fairly simply. So it's the ray that starts at z. Now, when we have these inequality signs, we always think of them first as the boundary cases. We look at where there's equality. So if this angle is equal to pi on 6, this is what it will be. Okay, and also equal to pi. So this is, when it's equal to pi, it's exactly the negative real axis. Okay, and we want argz to be in between these two points. So this is simply this area in here. Now, I'm not going to shade this straight away because I want to find the intersection with this set of points here. So how do we find the intersection of this set of points? Well, the trick with these types is always to start with let z equal x plus iy. Okay, so now that we've let z equal x plus iy, what do we want? We want the imaginary part of z. So the imaginary part of z, well, that's just y. Okay, it's fairly simple. And so now when we want to solve this, it's the same as sketching the region of y is less than 3. And so this is the Cartesian equation of this set that we're trying to, or this region that we're trying to sketch. And so when we're looking at y less than 3, now we should remember that this is a strictly less than here, so we cannot include the line y equals 3. So what does that mean? We need to draw a dotted line as such. So this is a broken line or a dotted line here. Okay. And we want all the points y that's less than 3. So all these points underneath this line. Okay, so now we can go ahead and shade in our uh, intersection of the two regions. So that's going to be all these points in here. And of course, out to infinity along here. Now one thing that you should be slightly careful about is this point here, where we have a boundary case that's included and a boundary case that's not included where they overlap, I would suggest putting an open circle here to indicate that this point, even though it belongs to this locus part here, the arg part, it doesn't belong to this imaginary z less than 3. So in the intersection of the two, we can't include it. So putting this open circle here just signifies that this part is not included. 
All right, let's have a look at part two. So what was part two? Part two says that the z times z bar is less than four. Okay, so once again, with these locus type problems, what do we do? We let z equal x plus i y. So let z equal x plus i y. Okay, so therefore z times z bar is going to be x plus i y times, well z bar is the conjugate, so x minus i y. And now here we have a difference, or not a difference, we have a sum of two squares, because we're working with complex numbers and we're multiplying a complex number by its conjugate, so we get the sum of two squares, so it's the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Okay, so now our problem here reduces to simply, we can say therefore, x squared plus y squared is less than 4. That's what we're trying to sketch here. Okay, so if we're trying to sketch this point here, this one is fairly simple. It's a circle. Now, once again, we have a strictly less than sign here. So we don't include the boundary case, but we want all the points inside the circle. Now, again, the circle is centered at zero. It has a radius of two. So it's probably good to indicate here that this is two. This is two, minus two, and minus two. Okay, so all these points aren't included on the boundary, but all the points within the circle are included. Okay, and so that's how to solve this one here. Okay, let's have a look at the final problem. So this one says... The modulus of z squared minus the conjugate of z squared, and that's greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so we need to simplify this a little bit. And once again, we start off with letting z equal x plus i y. Okay, now we want to work out what z squared is. So z squared is going to be x plus i y, or squared. Now, x plus i y squared, we're going to get x squared. So that's squaring this term. When we square this term, we're going to have i squared y squared. So this will become a minus y squared. So this is our real part. And our imaginary part will be 2x i y. So I can write it like this. Okay. Now, here we're going to use the fact that what we've got here is a complex number minus its conjugate. Now, the complex number is z squared. So, we're looking at the uh, 2 times the imaginary part of z squared. right? And this is using this property. That omega, so any complex number, minus its conjugate, that's equal to 2 times i times the imaginary part of omega. So, using this fact, we have that z squared minus the conjugate of z squared, that's going to equal 2i times the imaginary part of z, of z squared rather. Okay, now what's the imaginary part of z squared? Well, here it is, it's 2xy. So we have 2i times 2xy, and of course 2 times 2 is 4, we get 4ixy. Okay, so now our problem reduces to this. The modulus of 2i xy is greater than or equal to 4. Okay, oh, this should be a 4. Okay, so this is 4i xy. It's greater than or equal to 4. We're taking the modulus of this. It's greater than or equal to 4. Okay, now the modulus of 4i is going to be 4, and we're left with the modulus of x, y is greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so we can cancel the 4s. We get the modulus of x, y is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, now here we have a modulus of two real numbers. Now the modulus 
of a real number. So the product of two real numbers is a real number. And when we take the modulus of a real number, that's the same as taking the absolute value of a real number. Okay, now, when we're taking the absolute values, we're not sure whether this in here is positive or negative. So what we do, we put the plus or minus out the front. So this is plus or minus x, y. It's greater than or equal to 1. And to see this a little more clearly, we can have y is greater than or equal to plus or minus 1 over x. Okay, so now we should recognize this very easily, that this is now... The, the positive is the positive rectangular hyperbola, and the negative is the other two branches in the second and fourth quadrant of the negative rectangular hyperbola. So when we consider this just as an equals here, just considering the boundary cases, this is what we get. We get this nice shaped double hyperbola, if you want to think of it in that way. So we get this shape like this, and when we sketch... Uh, the greater than, where we sketch the points, well, this is going to be all these points outside here. So y is larger than all these points. Okay? And that's our locus here. Alright, and so this one, it had a bit more to see what we needed to get to, but with all these algebraic pro uh, problems, you just usually let z equal to x plus i y, and then you work your way into something that's a little bit more familiar, and then we can sketch that fairly easily. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and make sure you subscribe to be up to date with all the videos that I release. Thanks for watching.